Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the presentation of the Quarter 1 2021 Labour Force Survey or LFS results. My name is Jim Dalton. I'm the statistician in the CSO's Labour Market Analysis Area with responsibility for the LFS. Before getting into the results for Quarter 1 this morning, let me first highlight some important information about the LFS. I will start with some definitions used in the LFS. The official labour market classification of respondents to the LFS is based on the International Labour Organisation or ILO criteria. Taking employment first, and a person aged 15 years or more is classified as employed if during the reference week he or she worked for one hour or more for payment or profit, including work on the family farm or business, or if they were away from work during the reference week but had a job to return to. A person aged 15 to 74 years is classified as unemployed if during the reference week he or she was not employed, had taken active steps to seek employment in the previous four weeks and is available to start work in the two weeks after the reference week. Finally, a person aged 15 years or more is classified as inactive if he or she does not fulfil the conditions for being either employed or unemployed. A new frame of regulation governing the production of European statistics on persons and households came into force on the 1st of January last. It is called the Integration of European Social Statistics or YES Regulation. The YES Regulation covers various domains of social statistics including labour market statistics. It aims to ensure that social statistics based on sample surveys like the LFS are produced in a more harmonised and coordinated manner across Europe. The CSO had to introduce changes to the LFS questionnaire in Ireland from quarter one of this year because of this new regulation. These include the addition of some new questions, the removal of some and changes to others in terms of response, options or frequency. There have also been cha some changes to the order of the questions as the flow of the LFS questionnaire across Europe is now more prescribed and harmonised under the YES regulation. The LFS questionnaire for Ireland for quarter one is available at the link shown on this slide. The changes to the LFS due to the YES regulation in Ireland were expected to be minor and not cause any significant break in series. This is because many of the changes required have already been implemented by the CSO during the transition from the quarterly national household survey to the LFS in quarter three of 2017. However, the CSO still implemented a pilot survey to evaluate what impact the, imp the YES regulation had on results from the LFS and to allow the CSO to deal with breaks in series that might arise. This pilot survey was initially planned to be conducted early in 2020 and had to be postponed due to COVID-19 and the inability of CSO interviewers to carry out face-to-face -face interviews from March 2020 to April 2021. Instead, the YES pilot survey had to be amended and the revised YES pilot survey was carried out by telephone interviewing in quarter four of 2020. The publication of the LFS results for quarter one, which would normally have been published before the end of May, was postponed to allow the CSO the time to analyse the results of the pilot survey and to fully evaluate the impacts of YES regulation on the LFS. The Labour Market Analysis team and CSO worked out with our colleagues from the Social Data Collection and Methodology Divisions and CSO, and with Eurostat to finalise the LFS estimate estimates for quarter one 2021, and to ensure that consistent and coherent historic LFS series is available for users. Separate to the pilot survey, the CSO have been working with Eurostat to re-engineer the already published LFS series in Ireland to reflect what the results would have been like if they were collected under the US regulation. In general, the analysis of the pilot survey data and the re-engineered historic series seem to support the initial view that the effects of YES would be minimal in Ireland. One of the main changes for the LFS due to the YES regulation in Ireland is the way in which the labour market status of those who are away from work in the reference week are classified. The rules regarding the attachment to the employment for those away from work in the reference week have changed. Testing attachment for respondent in the LFS involves confirming the duration of the absence from work is for at most three months 
or they continue to receive at least half of their salary from their employer. Up to quarter four 2020, the new attachment, the attachment to their, their employment was only being tested for those who indicated that they were away from work because of temporary layoff. All other reasons for absence from work in the reference week were being automatically classified as employed. From quarter one 2021, the attachment to employment has also been tested by those away from work due to parental leave, off season and other reasons. It is important to note that the salary payment and duration of absence continues to be tested for per, per parental leave, while only duration of absence has been tested for, for off season and other reasons. The table on this slide summarizes these changes. The CSO applied these changes under the ES regulation retrospectively to the LFS series up to quarter four 2020. This was done inclu by including additional reasons for absence being tested for attachment to a job by those who were away from work in the reference week to determine their labour market status. This has allowed the CSO to evaluate the impact of the change under ES and to re-engineer the historic series to account for this change. Other changes such as reordering of existing variables to reflect the changes under ES regulation were also included as part of the re-engineering process. The changes applied to date, to, to date have had a minimal effect for most of the historic LFS series from 1998 up to 2019. This is largely because the numbers away from work in the reference week tended to be relatively low in most quarters up to 2019. However, in 2020, because of the impact of COVID-19 and government restrictions, the numbers who reported being away from work in the reference week increased substantially. And thus, the attachment to employment has been tested for more people rather than being assumed for them. The net effect is that under the ES regulation, there are fewer persons away from work in the reference week being classified as employed, which reduces the total number of employed persons during 2020 but the effect prior to that was minimal. I will now present some graphs showing the effect of the re-engineering on some of the key indicators. The label pre-ES refers to the series published up to quarter four 2020 and post-ES refers to the re-engineered series due to ES which has been published today. The graph on slide 12 compares employment by quarter for both the pre and post-ES. As you can see, the effect on the series up to 2019 is very minimal, but the impact of the high numbers of absences from, from work and the new attachment rules have reduced employment levels in 2020. Slide 13 compares the pre and post yes series for unemployment, and it follows the same pattern as employment up to 2019. The, the effect of yes is less pronounced into 2020 as most of those absent from work who were previously employed fall into the inactive category rather than unemployed. Slide 14 compares pre and post yes participation rates. Like employment and unemployment, participation for both are similar up to 2019, but there are differences in 2020 for the reasons outlined above. The participation rate for Q2 shows the highest differential at two percentage points, and you can note that Q2 also showed the highest number of absences in 2020. Slide 15 compares employment rates pre and post yes, and the differentials in 2020 highlight the reduction in employment estimates due to the new attachment rules. Finally, slide 16 compares unemployment rates pre and post yes, and you can note the lesser impact of yes on unemployment in 2020. The methodology in the information note on the impact of COVID-19 on the LFS that was published with the Q2 LFS last August still applies. The link to the information note is shown on your screen now, and a link to the information note is also provided in the LFS release for quarter one and on the CSO website. COVID-19 continues to have an impact on the data collection for the LFS. The suspension of all face-to-face -face household interviews last March is still in force to a large extent, and therefore most interviews in quarter one 2021 were con conducted by telephone. Following public health guidelines regarding COVID-19, our interviewers call to the householder only to ask if they would like to take part, and once the household has agreed to take part, the interviewer will conduct the interview over the phone. 
Households randomly selected will receive introductory letters by post giving them an option to ring the interviewer or the interviewer may call to their house to ask them to take part. These surveys give us a picture of the economic and social situation of the citizens of Ireland in a way and with a level of accuracy that no one else can gain. If you are asked to take part in a CSO survey, please do so. It means that when CSO figures are quoted, you know they're accurate because you told us. The CSO is published using the ILO definitions of employment, unemployment and activity defined earlier. These are the international standard and under EU regulation, the CSO is obliged to compile labour market estimates from the LFS according to those concepts and definitions. The LFS results published today for quarter one have been compiled in this standard way. The CSO began publishing COVID-19 adjusted estimates of, of unemployment as part of the monthly unemployment estimates released from March 2020. The latest COVID-19 adjusted unemployment estimates for March 2020 through to May 2021 inclusive have been published today. The estimates for the end of March 2021 to the end of May 2021 are also included in the LFS released today. These measures should be considered as the upper bound for unemployment. The CSO has now been making available COVID-19 adjusted employment estimates as part of the LFS release since quarter one of last year. COVID-19 adjusted employment estimates and rates are included in the LFS release today for the end of March 2021 through to May 2021. These should be considered as the lower bound for employment. Turning now to some of the headline results published as part of the LFS today. Using the standard ILO criteria, the unadjusted number of persons aged 15 years and over in employment stood at just over 2.23 million in quarter one 2021, with an associated employment rate of 65.6% for those aged 15 to 64 years. At the end of March, the COVID-19 adjusted measure of employment, or the lower bound of the number of persons aged 15 years and over in employment, is estimated to have been 1,786,000, with an associated COVID-19 adjusted employment rate of 52% for those aged 15 to 64 years. Using the standard ILO criteria again, the unadjusted number of persons aged 15 to 74 years who were unemployed in quarter one stood at 170,500, with an associated unemployment rate of 7.1% for those aged 15 to 74 years. At the end of March 2021, the COVID-19 adjusted measure of unemployment, or the upper bound of the number of persons aged 15 to 74 years who were unemployed, was over 612,000 with an associated COVID-19 ad adjusted unemployment rate of 25.7% for those aged 15 to 74 years. Finally, the ILO defined labour force was just over 2,401,000 with an associated participation rate of 60%. Those not on the labour force totaled 1,603,400. The LFS results presented today for quarter 2021 20, perhaps illustrate better the effects of COVID-19 than in previous quarters. This is primarily due to the change in the methodology for job attachment described earlier. In quarter 1 2021, 67.2% of those away from work on the reference week were still classified as employed. 9.5% were unemployed and 23.3% were inactive. Previously, most of these persons were likely to have been classified as employed. The CSO were able to link the LFS data for quarter one with revenue data in respect of recipients of the Employment Wage Subsidy Scheme, or the EWSS, and data from the Department of Social Protection for those in receipt of the Pandemic Unemployment Payment on the PUP. This linking of data was done in accordance with the CSO data matching protocols. The criteria for linking the data this quarter is based on whether the respondent was in receipt of the PUP or EWSS in the interview reference week. When the ILO criteria was applied to this match data, 49.5% of persons in receipt of PUP in quarter one in the reference week were classified as employed, 16.7% were classified as unemployed, while 33.8% were classified as inactive. 
The majority of EWSS recipients at 91.2% were classified as employed, while 2.4% were unemployed and 6.4% were classified as inactive. I will now go back and give some further information with regard to employment. The slide in front of you now compares the annual change in employment with the annual change in the number of persons away from work and the annual change in the average total hours worked each week. Employment fell over the year to, to quarter one by 116,600 or 5% to just over 2.23 million. However, the number of persons who were away from work in the reference week increased over the year by 48.5% to nearly 310,000. The reasons for absence would include, for example, layoff, family-related leave or holidays. The extent of these absences from work during the reference week resulted in an annual decrease of 9.9% or 7.6 million in the total number of actual hours worked per week, which stood at 76.3 million hours in quarter 4 2020 and 68.7 million hours in quarter 1 of this year. The table on this slide presents absences from work during the reference week by, for each economic sector as a percentage share of total employment for each sector for quarter 1 of 2019 through to 2021. The differing impact of COVID-19 and public health restrictions are very evident from the table. The rate of absence from work has not changed from some sectors such as agriculture, forestry and fishing, industry and information and communications. However, the adverse effect of the pandemic has affected absence rates for other sectors and some notable examples are the accommodation and food services sector, where the rate of absence was 7.1% in quarter one of 2019, 11.4% in quarter one 2020, and stood at 40.8% in quarter one of this year. The other activities sector, which includes recreation and cultural activities, where the rate of absence in quarter one of this year stood at 36.2%, have increased from 8, 6% and 12% in quarter one of 2019 and quarter one 2020 respectively. The construction sector, where the rate of absence was 28.4% in quarter one of this year, having stood at 4.9% in quarter one of 2019 and 9.4% in quarter one of 2020. The bar chart on this slide illustrates further the data presented in the previous slide, where the grey bars show the increased absence rate in quarter one 2021 for several sectors, where, when compared to quarter one 2019 and quarter one of 2020. The bar chart on this slide compares the number of hours worked per week expressed in millions for, by economic sector for quarter one in each year from 2019 to 2021. In quarter one 2021, the number of hours worked in several sectors were close to 20, quarter one 2019 levels, and some of those sectors such as public administration and defence and agriculture, forestry and fishing would be less likely to be impacted by the pandemic. However, as indicated in the earlier slide, the accommodation and food services sector and the other activities sector and the construction sector recorded the highest percentage share of employment regarding absences in quarter one of 2021. This is reflected in the, this chart where the hours worked in quarter one 2021 are shown in the grey bars for those sectors is significantly lower than the levels from quarter one in the previous two quarters. Turning now to the economic sectors, and employment, and employment fell in eight of the 14 economic sectors over the year. The greater rates of decrease were in the accommodation and food services sector, down by 43.6% or 73,900. The administration and support services sector, down by 29.8% or 33,300. The other activities sector, where, which includes cultural and recreation activities, down by 29.8% or 34,700 and the construction sector which was down by 19.1% or 28,100. The great, greater rates of increase on the other hand were in the information and communication sector that was up by 9.5% or 12,200 and the public administration and defence sector which was up by 7.3% or 8,400. Turning now to employment by gender, and male employment 
fell by 67,200 or 5.3% over the year, while female employment was down by 49,300 or 4.6% over the year. Full-time employment was down by 3.8% over the year to just under 1,797,000, while part-time employment fell by 45,300 or 9.5% over the year to just 434,000. The fall in part-time employment was concentrated amongst females who accounted for all of the annual fall. The graph on this slide charts the annual volume changes in full and part-time employment by quarter over the last five years. Part-time underemployment was nearly 108,000 and accounted for 24.9% of total part-time employment in quarter one of 2021. The number of self-employed persons and the number of employees both fell over the year. Self-employment fell by 15.2% and employees fell by 4.1%. When adjusted for seasonal factors, employment stood at just over 2.25 million in quarter one of this year, down by about 10,000 from the previous quarter. The graphic on this slide shows the quarter-on-quarter -quarter change of the seasonally adjusted employment series over the past five years. I will now give you some further information with regard to unemployment. As I mentioned earlier, using the standard ILO definitions, the unemployment rate was 7.1% in quarter one of this year. The numbers in, unempl in un unemployed stood at 170,500 in quarter one, and that was up f by 48.6% from a year earlier. The graphic on this slide charts the trend in unemployment over the past five years. In volume terms, there were 93,500 males and 77,000 females classified as unemployed. Male unemployment was up by 46.4% over the year, and female unemployment was up by 51.5%. The long-term unemployment rate, that is persons unemployed for 12 months or more, was up from 1.3% to 1.7% in quarter one from a year earlier. There were 40,800 persons classified as long-term unemployed in quarter one, and this accounted for 23.9% of all unemployed persons. The seasonally adjusted unemployment rate was up from 6.2% to 7.3% over the quarter. In volume terms, the seasonally adjusted number of persons unemployed was up by 18.2% or 27,600 over the quarter to 178,700. The graph in the slide charts the trend in the rate over the past five years. The monthly unemployment estimates for May 2021 have also been published today and the headline results from that release are presented on this slide. The standard measure of monthly unemployment indicates a volume of 174,700 persons unemployed at the end of May 2021, with an associated unemployment rate of 7.8%, which was down slightly from the revised rate of 7.9% for April of this year. The COVID-19 adjusted unemployment rate was 21.9% in May 2021, down from a revised 24.8% for April 2021. Finally, some further detail on the labour force. The total number of persons in the labour force in quarter 1 2021 was down by 2.5%, or 60,800 over the year, to just over 2,401,000. In terms of decomposing the change in the labour force, there was a positive demographic effect of 20,000 and a negative participation effect of 80,700. On a seasonally adjusted basis, the labour force increased slightly over the quarter to just under 2,421,000 in quarter one of this year. This completes the data element of the presentation this morning. Finally, some information on forthcoming releases from the labour market analysis area of the CSO and also uh, some information on the YES regulation. Firstly, in terms of releases, the monthly unemployment estimates fi figures for May 2021 have been published today. The monthly unemployment estimates 
and the live register figures for June 2021 will be published on the 30th of June and the 2nd of July, respectively. Earnings analysis using the Administrative Data Sources, or EAADS, for 2019 and possibly 2020 are expected to be published in July. PXDAT tables for the earnings and labour costs 2020 annual results will be updated once the EAADS results are published. And finally, the LFS and earnings and labour cost results for quarter two uh, dates will be confirmed in due course. As always, users should consult the CSO releases calendar on the CSO website for upcoming releases. Coming back now to the new EU regulation, which we mentioned earlier, which came into force on the 1st of January this year. As I mentioned, the CSO has re-engineered the historic LFS series to take account of the main changes to the LFS series in Ireland due to this regulation. Users were advised about this work on the historical LFS series in the following information note which was published recently. The changes to the historical LFS series are minimal and mainly affect the series in 2020 as they re relate to the treatment of those who are absent from work in the reference week and where the attachment to the employment has been tested for additional reasons for the absence. The revised historic LFS series has been made available to users today in the LFS release tables and the PXDAT database dissemination service. Additional material has also been made available with the LFS res results today to demonstrate the size of the effect of the, on key labour market indicators. The CSO will continue to monitor the LFS results throughout 2021 and engage with Eurostat to ensure that any breaks in series that have, have been removed. And of course, users will be kept informed if further update dates are required to the historic LFS series. So in summary today, uh, what we can say is, first of all, the results for quarter one, like previous quarters, have been compiled according to ILO definitions and concepts. The effects of COVID-19 continues to be paired from the results. Over the year, employment fell by 116,600, while unemployment increased by 55,800. The effect of increased public health restrictions during the quarter was also evident. In quarter one of this year, seasonally adjusted unemployment fell by 10,000 from quarter four last year, while unemployment rose by 27,600. The average number of hours actually worked each week in quarter 1 2021 was 68.7 million hours, down 9.9% or 7.6 million hours per week from a year earlier. The results also showed that for a number of sectors, the hours worked were near 20, quarter 1 2019 levels, but for others, the considerable adverse of the pandemic is evident. Finally, absences from work during the reference week were just under 210,000 in quarter 1 of this year, compared to just over 208,000 in quarter one of last year. This concludes the presentation this morning. Thank you for your attention.